What's up YouTube? In today's video, I wanna sit down and get just a little bit more technical than I usually would and show you guys just kind of exactly what I'm actually doing to make the CD009 swap work in an S30. Um, usually I kinda just kinda skip through the fine details, but I know a lot of you guys like to know exactly what it is that I'm doing and just get details for your own builds. For a lot of you watching, you may not even own Dotsons, you might just be interested in it. Hopefully this video is entertaining enough, um, even for those people who might not be specifically interested in doing a swap like this on their own car. Um, but at the very least, I wanted to show some comparisons between the RB25 transmission, which I just pulled out of the car yesterday, and the CD009, or the, the new to me CD009 uh, that's gonna be going in the car. And I guess with that, let's get started. So as we saw in previous videos, this is the CD009. And this is the RB25 transmission. So there's actually a little bit of similarity between these two transmissions. Um, obviously my RB25 came with this transmission. Uh, there's also an RB20 transmission that exists. It's a little bit different from the 25 trans. Uh, 25 trans is supposedly a little bit, uh, a little bit stronger, more durable than the 20. And uh, it's physically bigger as well. Hopefully the lighting's not too bad with the shadow and the sunlight there. But uh, CD009 obviously comes out of a 350Z or a uh, VQ35 as well. So between all the different years of a 350Z, it's possible to get a transmission that isn't a CD009. The reason you want a CD009 is because of the synchros. Um, I don't know if the gears themselves are any different. I know the, as far as I know, the ratio of the gearing is the same, but the CD009, which is considered the late model transmission, uh, is supposed to be the best and the most durable and the most desirable. Z1 Motorsports actually has a really good diagram that breaks down the different years um, for which cars between the G35 and the 350Z use the CD009. Before that, I think there was like a 001, a 2, I, it may have actually gone all the way up to 9, I'm not 100% sure off that, off the top of my head. But the 009 is what you want, I think it's everything, I want to say 2005 and later. Probably gonna double check this before I post it up online, but like I said, Z1 Motorsports has a really good diagram. I can actually probably put a link to it in the description. For my setup on the CD009, I'm using a Serial 9 shifter. Not sponsored by these guys in any way. Um, I just really like the product. It was recommended to me by a friend who uses it. He said, don't do anything other than this. You'd be wasting your time. So far from what I can tell, it seems like a Seems like a pretty nice piece of hardware. It's definitely not cheap, but uh, with the amount of issues I hear of other people having with other brand shifters, I think it's hopefully gonna end up being worth the money. Now the 009 actually had a whole bunch of extra stuff bolted onto this, just miscellaneous brackets and hoses and whatever else, weights and certain things that the original car would have come with. This is the factory, um, I guess, bracket that the shifter would have come through, mounts on basically the same way this one does but obviously it brings that shifter point back quite a bit and the g35 and 350z both use this obviously in s30 you don't want it you need something to shorten it up which is why i went with the serial 9 shifter so on to measurements From the mounting surface of the bell housing to the actual shifter with the Serial 9 shifter is about 31 inches. And then once you actually mount the shifter with the little bracket all the way forward, you can get that to about roughly 29, a little over, little over 29, and that's from the mounting surface of the bell housing flange. Now similarly with the RB25 transmission, and I assume the 20 is probably the same length, I think, the center of our shifter is right at 29. So 
between these two, we are actually in a pretty good position here to be just about in the same spot. Now the only thing to consider on a CD009 on top of that when pairing it up to an RB25 is going to be the fact that you need an adapter plate to mate up that bell housing or that mounting flange with the RB um, engine block. When it comes to adapter plates, there's actually a few, a couple different options that I found. I ended up going with this LOJ conversions uh, bracket or adapter flange, whatever you want to call it. I know Collins Adapters also makes one that a lot of people have used. I did a little bit of research on both. Um, kind of found the same amount of feedback for both options. And I liked personally the looks of the LOJ kit a little bit better. The fit and finish just looked a little bit uh, cleaner. Just cleaner cuts like CNC cuts and the uh, um, powder coating looked a little better. Didn't see anything negative about it. Pricing was very similar. So I opted for the LOJ kit. Um, I actually reached out to them. They gave me free shipping, which was kind of helpful as well. So with this kit, uh, unlike some other kits, you do not need to mill any bell housing flange surface because it comes with this custom offset flywheel, which I'm told will work with either an RB25 clutch or a 350Z clutch, which is kind of nice. It gives you the option to run either. Um, 350Z stuff is obviously a little bit easier to source than RB stuff, uh, but I've been talking about going to a 009 for a couple years now and uh, I think I'm just gonna like the way it shifts the ratios I actually made a diagram which I could try to post in the video um, but I can talk about it here too the CD009 overall um, final drive is actually slightly shorter than the RB25 transmission which would mean if I use the same differential which I was have been using a 390 and if I use that same differential I would actually have higher RPMs at cruising speed with a CD009 than with my RB25 transmission, which is not something I wanted. So I'll be switching to a 354 R200. And for now, I have my old pal Kyle welded up. Sitting under this tarp at the moment, looking its best. I actually have to clean that out a little bit more, um, make sure there's no welding slag or anything left over in it fill it with fluid, then we can slap it into the car. The reason I'm going with a welded diff this year is because I'm just spending so much money on the transmission swap itself that it just really wasn't in the budget to go with a limited slip this year like I previously was using with the 390. This diff is the 390 here, and it's slightly damaged. I think it's definitely savable, but uh, for the time being, I'm not gonna tear it apart. I'm just gonna throw that 354 in make that work and uh, we'll go from there. But I did uh, snap an axle last fall at the drag strip as well as damage my 390 differential um, just a little bit and I absolutely destroyed the mount for the differential as well. Um, it was a Techno Versions differential mount, the top mount style. I reached out to the guy, um, I assume he's the owner of the company, and kind of gave him a, a rundown of what happened and he was super cool sent me a brand new one for free under warranty. I've had this thing for, I want to say like four years now in the car and I actually had a bolt come loose right there. And so it was only actually technically bolted in in three spots, which caused it to twist and massive torque load. And it just got absolutely destroyed. But I have another one. I have full confidence in this thing. Um, I also got a new somewhere in here. Oh, right here. Got a new bushing for it. This is the old one. Pretty pretty mangled up and destroyed there. Obviously, there was a lot of a lot of torque on that particular component and it caused it to fail. So, we'll be putting the new Techno versions diff mount in place along with the new bushing to support the diff. And I have a new set of axles on the way. Actually, I have two pairs of axles on the way as a backup, just in case. These are the Z31 300ZX turbo axles, specifically turbo. There's a lot of write-ups about these things uh, with the four bolt flange, uh, hub adapter kit that gets welded onto the hub. And then these, I wanna say it's a 29 tooth spline, I think is what it is off the top of my head. 
plugs right into the diff. So it makes these pretty simple to work with. I personally did the bearing cage flip on the, uh, I can't remember if it's the inner or the outer. It's been a while since I did it. I'd have to go back and look. But I did do that cage flip and I just plugged them in and they worked. A lot of people say you can't run them that way. They'll bottom out They're too, or you need to run, get shorter axle shafts for them. I never had a single issue on my lowered car. Maybe stock height cars, there might be more issues with that. But um, up until I got horrible wheel hop at the drag strip and a twisted up differential that causes the axle shaft to snap, I don't think it actually had anything to do necessarily with the shaft being too long. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not an engineer. But I'm gonna run that same setup again. I'm a little bit nervous using a welded diff that it's gonna prematurely wear the axles, but that's why I bought two pairs. And as far as I can tell, this passenger side axle still seems to be fine. So really all I needed was replacing the one. And yesterday when I pulled the RB25 transmission out, I actually weighed it um, drained along with the CD009 drained just to get a weight comparison because I was curious. Um, they look to be roughly about the same size as far as like outside dimensions, but I figured the CD009 would probably be quite a bit heavier just being a six speed. Um, I figured there'd be more materials packed inside of it. But the RB25 transmission dry weighed 118 pounds on my scale and the CD009 weighed 122 pounds on the scale. So I was actually pretty shocked to find out they essentially weigh the same or close enough that I would probably call it the same. So there's really not much of a weight gain picked up by going to a six speed. And as far as I can tell, I should not have to change a whole lot in the tunnel um, to make it fit. They seem to be really close in size. So I've been using the McKinney motor mounts uh, cross member mount for the transmission. Sorry, again, the lighting is terrible here. Which looks like that. Um, I've heard recently that McKinney is out of business. I know there's a few other companies that are out there selling engine and transmission mounts for RBs. As far as I can tell, I think this mount is also going to work with the CD009. Looks like the mounting point's going to be brought back about in maybe two inches on the car. That should simplify things quite a bit. Um, just the fact that I'm not going to have to make my own mount. I wasn't super opposed to doing it, but if I can, if I'm able to reuse one that I already have, I'm absolutely going to take advantage of that. So I know Apex, um, and I think there's one other company, maybe maybe CX Racing. I don't really know what their what their setup is like, but um, there's probably at least two or three brands out there or companies that are making mounts and a lot of them advertise as being able to fit a T56, RB25, or a CD009. So I know they all use the same style bushing and then I think it just comes down to where exactly they locate um, to bolt through the floor of the car. So here we are underneath the car. I still have the clutch and the old flywheel in place. Um, got my fuel lines running there. And this is the current modification I've done to the tunnel to cut out the old um, cross member mount. So this side I pretty much have just about completely cut out. Um, this side I didn't have to cut out quite as much. And with the CD009 I think I'm going to be able to leave this top part, which I'm not going to cut it if I don't have to. I feel like that probably adds a little bit of rigidity to the whole tunnel setup. Um, but this part is what I'm worried about. This may have to come out, um, this part here, in case you can't tell. Um, so I may have to trim out a little bit more of that just to make that wide portion, that wide portion that runs around right there where the everything bolts together. I th think that lands right around in that spot so it, it kind of makes for a tight fit so you do have to trim this regardless of if you run a rb25 or a cd009 transmission so it's not really a big deal to me because if i just have to cut out this one little spot it's not a whole lot of extra work so my next step is going to be to pull the clutch off pull this old flywheel off and then put the adapter plate on and the new flywheel and then i should be able to put the clutch back on I'm going to reuse this one. I'm thinking it's in good shape. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I just wanted to give you a little technical breakdown of uh, the setup that I'm using or going to be 
trying to use. The only other and last piece to this puzzle is going to be the drive shaft. Drive shaft, my old one, is over there. There it is. Um, it's about, from what I can tell, without doing an official measurement with transmission in the car, looks like it's going to be about two inches too short, unfortunately. And the yoke is also different. Uh, the tail shaft output flange, it's still like a yoke style, the same way the RB25 is. Um, it's just a different spline count. So, probably just going to wind up selling this one and getting a new drive shaft altogether. Um, probably going to be three to four week wait time for that to be made. But uh, other than that, it'll be a slight hold up, but that should really be the only thing um, that I end up waiting on. Everything else should be pretty much. Hopefully, I don't want to jinx it, but should be relatively plug and play. I do have to relocate the clutch line for the uh, slave cylinder has to go to the other side of the tunnel because it's on the opposite side on the CD009. Other than that, most of it's pretty little stuff and just kind of reassembly with a little bit different twist on it from the old setup. I actually did sell this RB25 transmission to a guy on the internet last night. So that'll be on its way out next week. Wanted to get this video done right now, just so I can actually compare the two side by side while I have both transmissions on hand. This one will be saying bye-bye for the last time. Last time pulling it out of the car. Um, hopefully the new guy has, has good luck with it. He told me he's going auto to manual swap, so should serve him well for that. If you heard Blue doing all his crying. Blue, Blue, come here, buddy. Why are you crying? He wants to help. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, hopefully there's at least a few of you that enjoyed this a uh, little bit more technical side of things. Uh, I usually don't share every detail like that, but just kind of for my own reference, it's kind of a journal. And uh, just to show anybody who's interested what my setup is, it might not be perfect. I don't ever claim to know what I'm doing because um, I, I know a Ford 8.8 diff would be awesome and it would require a totally different drive shaft setup. Um, a lot of times it just comes down to budget in the moment and I think for the money I think this is a reasonably decent setup. Obviously I'm, I would love to go LSD and I'm definitely going to do it next year because I've been LSD and I'm really not looking f completely forward to a welded diff at least on a street car but I think I'll be able to make it work just for one summer. So if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments section or feel free to reach out on Instagram or, or wherever. Um, hopefully I can answer any questions. I like talking about specific stuff like this, like when I find somebody who's actually working on a genuine project. I'm always glad to help um, share my setup. And like I said, setup's not always perfect and it's kind of always changing. But in the moment, I think this is what's going to work for me. Um, I'm open to ideas too, but I kind of already have the ball rolling with this. So um, we're going to try it out. Hopefully everything works. Um, I have pretty good confidence that the CD009 is going to fit with just a little bit of trimming. I know other people have ran them in S30s before. I've seen it done. Um, I actually know a guy who just put one in his car. So it's definitely possible. It just takes a little bit of work. Um, a little bit of adaptations and obviously I already had a working or previously working setup in the car so I have to change a little bit that was already done and kind of move in reverse for just a little bit to make this all happen so thanks for watching guys stay tuned for the next one we'll see you next time